Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about learning. So let's get into it. So the question in question was posted on a video I made called Why do software developers struggle to improve their skills? Hi Frederick, very interesting video. I was always under the impression that there was a correlation between years spent as a professional software developer and skill. I was sadly mistaken. I could shoot back to that. Uh, I make the claim that most software developers don't progress their skills a lot after the first five years. Uh, that's basically the, the thing that they are latching onto here. But after watching your video, one question occurred to me, and that is from your own personal journey as a software developer. How did you learn how to learn? I'm still trying to become a better self teacher. Did you learn how to learn at the university with techniques shown by your professors, or was it from experience over time with professional? within the profession as a software developer. Or last, can it be said that a combination of both university and job experience, a job experience, would you be the person you are now if you didn't attend university and was uh, and were self-taught or did university provide you with tools in which you couldn't do without? Thank you for sharing your insights in, numerous, uh, in your numerous videos and many thanks. No worries, dude. I might have butchered your comment here, but yeah, I think I understand. So uh, I did. I the way that I learned how to learn by myself. I didn't get that from. Uh, I didn't really get any anything from university to do that. It's something that I figured out myself, and that has to do with sort of a bit of personal reflection. Uh, so if you want a short answer to as to what I have done in order to be who I am or like understand the things that I do uh, it really is as simple as what I call meta thinking uh, you have to know yourself well enough to understand under what circumstances you will do things it's the same thing for for example um, if you have if you're struggling to lose weight as an example and you know about yourself that usually you have a sweet tooth or something like that then meta thinking would be that you understand that all right I just have to make sure that I'm not in a position where I have sweets at home so you make a commitment to say all right let's not have any sweets at home I set up my environment in such a way that I don't eat sweets and then you really only have to figure out okay how do I stop myself from going and buying sweets I hope that that makes sense to you. You're meta thinking. You're trying to put yourself. You're looking into the future when you will be in a different mindset and figuring out well, what should I do in order to behave in the way that I want to behave. And it's the same thing with learning. So I found out with myself, for example, that, and this was I did this from a, a very early age uh, when I was a kid even. I found out that the best way for me to learn is to watch somebody else do the thing that I want to do and then copy it and try or rather try to copy it. It's uh, it's similar to how a child tries to learn how to speak, right? You don't really know what you're saying per se, but you're just trying to make this words sound the same as mom or dad or whoever, right? Uh, or with counting, a classic one is that kids learn how to count by just saying the numbers 1, 2, 10, but they don't really understand arithmetic. It's the same thing for me. I don't really exactly understand what might be going on. So if I get a basic intro to what they're doing and show, oh yeah, this is their, how I do it, etc., etc., and then I can take what they did in that session and then I can sit by myself and try to recreate it and like experiment a little bit and try stuff out and see if I can do the same thing. If I do that and then I repeat that process, basically a little bit of introduction to the concept like theory and things like that, then I'll sit and try to copy it and then I do something and maybe it sort of works or maybe it doesn't and then I go back, learn some more and then I sit and experiment and I repeat over and over and over. That's usually the way it works for me. So, and that's fundamental to my learning process. I do really, really poorly. Uh, in many other situations when it comes to learning which is one of those things that is also healthy for you to know that guys uh, if you go to school you may not necessarily be the person who's going to do very well with just listening to a lecturer explain something to you or so forth so as I said for me that doesn't really work because usually when you just talk to me and explain things in theory it's not enough for me like a it's not in of, in of itself enough for me to develop my skills. So I figured out that, all right, 
let's that's why I love the internet like this is a godsend for people like me who really like to learn things because you have all this amazing content that people create like tutorial videos or example projects or you know you have articles like you it's a smorgasbord of learning opportunities that fit very well with me uh, and you I mean I figured out tons of this sort of stuff like an example would be that I know that I do really poorly with written tests which is a, it's a, always been a problem for me when I went to school. If it's a if it's a speaking test when we talk and we can have a discussion, I do much much better. And I also get very nervous, for example, when I submit a test where I can't really communicate my reasoning because I always when I sit with a test or something like that, I always start asking myself, well, yeah, this is the description of what I'm supposed to do, but how about this scenario, that scenario, do they mean that, do they mean this? I, I start question, uh, trying to figure out what the actual meaning is and see if there's an underlying thing that I'm not really understanding and that is very difficult when you don't have someone to talk to because if you have say a teacher where you can ask a fun, bunch of follow-up questions to answer when it, uh, related to the question you're going to answer it's easier for me to feel comfortable in that I have understood the thing I'm supposed to do in the right way, if that makes sense, and so, uh, and like these are just things that are personal to me. Other things that I know for uh, as a uh, big thing as well is that uh, I won't really be able to learn something that I don't really care about. I've, I figured that out as well. Like uh, I know I'm I'm one of those sort of people where I don't actually remember most people's names. Like I have, there's a big problem, and I mean, people that I have seen for years, I've known them for years, I don't really remember their names because they don't have an emotional impact on me. But on the other hand, if uh, if we take an ex a memory where we had a lot, bunch of fun, or like I can remember something uh, that happened like 20 years ago to this day because at that moment we had a bunch of, we had a f fun together or something special was happening that made me really attach uh, uh, th uh, that to my memory bank right and so by sort of analyzing that I figure out that okay I will do really poorly with things I don't really care about so I have to set up my learning so that I genuinely want to learn the thing I'm supposed to learn and Honestly, guys, most of my uh, I was an underachiever most of my school uh, in my school days. I swear to you guys, like I've been an underachiever. For, I was an underachiever for years and years and years, and it took me quite a long time to even just graduate high school because basically I I just didn't care. I really didn't care. It was not interesting to me. But once I start found software development. And that was a big source of pride for me. I mean, it's silly now, but when I took my courses and I did my courses in uh, computer science or programming and so forth, I had straight A's. Like, I had the top grade on every course because I really cared. I really wanted this. I loved it, and, you know, I still love it to this day. This is, like, a major, major part of what, what makes me me. So what I want you to take away from this is that... Uh, the way that at least I have learned how to learn, like how to study, comes from understanding my own way of thinking. I under I know for a fact that I won't be able to learn very well if I don't really care about the subject. So that's something that I have to ponder. How do I make that work for me? And I know for a fact that for me to really get an understanding of something, I have to see somebody else do it and try to copy it rather than just read about how it works. I need both. And by understanding the way that um, I, I usually do well, I can structure my learning process so that I can do these things. A classic example is the way that I learned programming is actually very simple. I looked at a tutorial. I have watched hundreds of tutorials. I've said this in other videos as well, guys. If you watch different people do the same thing and read different articles for the same thing, you will start to see a pattern in how people do it. One or two people will do it slightly differently or have a different style of doing something like, I don't know, create a class or a server or a front-end application or something like that. They will do something just tiny, a tiny little bit different and that increases your understanding of the nuances, how to do this thing. And then when you have gotten an introduction to the way that they do it, you go and you try to copy it. And then you try to add something to it and see, all right, like I've built this Hello World app a hundred times now. 
let's see if we can make something a little bit different. Let's see if we can add a feature that they didn't do and see if I can fi find someone who's trying to do that thing and I watch someone do that thing and I see, ah, okay, so they're doing it this way and then I go, okay, if I do this, does it work the same way for me? That's the way that I figured out that I learned the best by having someone show me the answer basically to the thing that I'm trying to make and then I go and copy it. And if I can do that, I learn really, really well. But I do really, really poorly in, you know, just having someone tell me, oh, build this thing and here is, you know, a basic description of the theory. That's what I suggest that you do. Uh, this works at least for me. Have a great day.